The day before spring break in his junior year, Jason decided to ask Denise if she would like to go to a movie with him. He had watched her for a long time and noticed she did not fool around with a lot of guys, was very studious, and kept herself very neat and clean. He had prayed on it and felt in his spirit that this young woman was going to be a very important part of his life. All the cheerleaders made spectacles of themselves to be near him, waiting for the chance to be asked out by him. Some even went so far as to ask him out, only to be turned down. Jason did not feel the flirty, vain cheerleader types were his type, but he did go out with a few young ladies in his school. When he asked a girl out, it quickly spread like wildfire through the school and she was an instant celebrity among her peers. But her walk of popularity only lasted for one date. That was all it took for Jason to see she wasn't his type. So he never asked them on a second date and after five such disappointing dates, deciding he wouldn't bother again with the silly flirtatious women at his school. But that was before he saw Denise Maples. For their first date, he took her to a movie that to this day, neither one of them could remember was about because they left halfway through it. They started talking about their church, their family, and their dreams and soon decided to leave the movie and go to a local diner where they ate and continued getting to know each other. Soon they discovered they had a lot in common and each secretly wished the night would last forever. After they had finished eating and were on the way back to Denise's house, Jason asked her if she would go out with him again. It was at this moment that the future of Jason and Denise became a certainty. When Denise looked at the handsome young man that was asking her out on a second date, something that it was rumored he never did with any girl in their school, she felt tears begin to sting her eyes and turned away for fear of him seeing her and calling her a baby or think it meant she didn't want to go out with him. Thinking he had offended her, he stopped and took her hand. Denise, what's wrong? Did I say something? Are you okay? He asked with such sincerity, it made her tears flow that much more. No, you haven't said anything. I'm sorry. I'm acting so silly. It's just that I heard you don't ask girls out for a second date, and here you are asking me out, and I didn't know what to think, she said, sounding embarrassed. Well, that's true and all, but those girls can't hold a candle to you, Miss Maples. I know this might sound corny, but I feel like I've known you my whole life. And I don't think you're like any of those other girls. I know. I feel the same way and it doesn't sound corny at all. When I went out with those other girls, all they wanted to talk about was parties and other people. And I could tell they were trying to get me to make a move on them. See, I'm not at all about all that, and I know you aren't either. With tears still shimmering in her eyes, she had to smile a little bit at his seriousness. You sound so old for someone so young. Yeah, I've heard that before. But that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, deep inside, I know it's a good thing, but it kind of makes you an oddball. Tell me about it. All my friends call me a prude because I stand up for Christ and don't act like them. Well, whatever you do, don't change. I think you are very special, and I like you just the way you are. Really? Thanks. I like you, too. So, what do you say? Can we go out again? I would love to. Good. They settled into a comfortable silence the rest of the way to Denise's house. 
When they got to her door, Jason spoke the words that made Denise know she had finally found the man of her dreams. Listen, I know this might sound silly, but I don't want to let this chance pass. I feel like we were meant for each other, and I don't want to scare you away, but I keep feeling like this night was supposed to happen. Do you understand anything I'm saying? Am I making sense? He asked with a look of desperation on his face. Deep inside, Denise felt like her whole heart was about to burst because she always knew this young man was going to be her husband. And to have him say what she was feeling was almost too good to be true. To put him at ease and hopefully not sound like a cornball, she tried to reassure him that she understood what he was trying to say. I understand perfectly. It's kind of funny because I felt the same way all night. I want us to be together. And if you believe like I believe and feel like I feel, then you know we are going to be together forever. Do you believe, Denise? I believe, Jason. Are we going to be together forever? We are going to be together forever. See you at school tomorrow. See you at school. Thanks for a great night. Good night. Good night. He kissed her on the cheek, waited until she closed her door, and walked away. The rest was history. They told their parents about their date and soon became inseparable at school. Denise didn't care that the popular girls started rumors that she must be putting out if she was getting steady with Jason Jones. When she told her best friend about her dream date, she almost laughed at the incredulous look that came on her face. You know, Nisi, I didn't believe you at first when you said you had a date with Jason, but girl, you got it going on. We're going to get married one day, Lil. Just like I tried to tell you that day in the lunchroom. Slow down, girl. Just because you went on a date doesn't mean you're getting married. Dang. I'm serious, Lil. And even though you don't believe me now, (laughs) you can still be my maid of honor. I believe you, Nisi, and I'm happy for you. Jason proposed to her the day they graduated, and they were married a year later. It was the greatest day of her life. They honeymooned on the Virgin Islands and returned to a life filled with love and happiness. The triplets were born three years after they were married, and Denise didn't think she could be happier. Then her parents died. And if it wasn't for the love and support of her husband and children and the strength of God, she felt she would grieve forever. On the nights after the funeral, Jason held her close and promised her he would always be there for her and softly kissed her tears away. She felt like a teenager again and snuggled closer in his strong arms, seeking solace from the pain and emptiness her parents' death left in her. And as usual, he didn't disappoint. But now he was gone, and she was left to walk alone. Refusing to fall into a pit of self-pity and funk, she shook her head and made herself return to the present to deal with her cluttered room. So out of character was it for her to clutter her room. She was almost at a loss to where she start to clean the mess. She walked over to her lounge chair and began sorting through all the discarded clothes, making piles of blouses, skirts, pants, and pajamas. Working nonstop for a half an hour, Denise soon began to see some progress in the mess she blamed only on herself. Before the other kids had come, her days were usually spent in front of her computer before she did her daily exercise and then returned to her daily routine of housework. 
but lately her days had been so filled with errands that involved the children, she hardly had time to breathe. She looked at the calendar on the wall and noticed she hadn't even turned it to the month of October yet. But more than that, she noticed all the days she had marked off and realized she had been quite a busy little bee this month. Between visits to the doctor, social services department, and schools, she'd hardly had a minute to breathe. Some days have been frustrating and unnerving, while others have been quite satisfying. But the end results made all the hard work and running around worth it. The kids were settled safely in school. The wheels had been set in motion for her to legally adopt them, and their life and health insurance policies were in order. Yes, she had been very busy, but she had also been very productive. Despite her impossibly busy days, bickering jealous kids, tired aching feet, and messy rooms, she was not complaining because she loved every minute of her life. She had to admit that sometimes she felt overwhelmed and even wondered if she had lost her cotton-picking mind for thinking she could handle six kids in the first place. But as usual, when she began to think about the kids, the feeling of love that swelled up in her heart made her know she had done the right thing. No one said raising six kids would be easy. But then when you think about it, Raising one child wasn't a walk in the park either. She knew there were always going to be challenges. She remembered the tips and spats the triplets had even before the other ones came. Things weren't always peaceful then, so what made her think it would be different now? She also knew the rough spots would eventually smooth themselves out. She expected the kids to go through these various changes she would be worried if they didn't. After all, they were going through a big period of adjustment, so all these little ripples in the tide were a part of life. As Denise straightened up the perfume bottles on her vanity table, she thought about her baby daughter with a smile curved the corners of her mouth. Net made no secret of the dislike she felt for the three newcomers and seemed intent on making them as uncomfortable as possible. Feeling that sternness would only worsen the situation, Denise decided instead to shower Net with more love and affection, hugging her more, spending more one-on-one time with her, complimenting her more, hoping this would assure her that there was no threat and she would always be her baby. No baby wanted to be replaced by another baby and they always put up a fight. Yeah, according to the natural order of things, everything was going according to plan. When she stopped and thought about her little family, she felt nothing but love and pride every one of them. Sure, there were days when attitudes were unbearable and the silences were deafening. Sure, there were days when she had to step in and be the referee or the counselor or the consoler or the doctor. But all in all, she was very happy. Her children were her world and she couldn't believe how attached she had become to the other three as in such a short period of time. She was beginning to learn a little bit about their different personalities and found she couldn't love them anymore if they were her own. Christine was such a little sweetheart, and she couldn't get enough of playing with her dolls. Denise enjoyed buying her dolls and doll clothes and watched her let her imagination run wild as she helped them run their little world. She adored her big sister and had taken a shine to Vet and Maddie. She kept her distance from Ned, and so did the others for that matter. 
And Denise was a little amused at the fact that it seemed Mimi and little Chrissy had a crush on Maddie. It was so cute seeing them stealing adoring looks at him and giggling when he made a funny comment or jab at his sisters. Jay was still putting up his brick wall of emotions, trying to appear aloof and untouchable, but she could see the soft inner core of insecurity and pain that everyone else missed. There were moments when he thought no one else was looking that he would relax and she could see the vulnerable, scared, hurt little boy that needed to be loved. She knew she couldn't force him to let her in since that would only make him retreat further into his shell. All she could do was wait, pray, and give him time. When he was sure it was safe and that she wasn't going anywhere, and that she was not going to send him away. Then he would begin to soften up, hopefully. There was no telling how long this would take. It could be a month, a year, or maybe even longer. But she was willing and ready to wait as long as she had to. Mimi had adapted to her environment rather quickly, and Denise wasn't sure if it was a little too quick. Although she seemed bubbly and jovial on the outside, Denise knew she must be missing her mom something awful. But she never mentioned her or showed any moments of nostalgia. She was the oldest girl and the one who had been with their mother the longest and had the most memories. So it would be very understandable for her to exhibit the most emotions but Denise saw none. So she was afraid the child was repressing her feelings, or even worse, masking them with feelings of contentment so no one would know she was afraid or lonely or sad. She always came home with an exciting story about a new friend she had made or a good grade she had gotten or a funny thing that had happened on the way to or from school. There was always an air of jubilation about her, and that just was not natural. She never seemed to have a bad day, and Denise knew that even kids had a bad day every once in a while. Sure, a lot of adults felt kids never had anything to complain about, but Denise knew that there was nothing further than the truth. Kids had it rough these days, and these kids had had their fair share of trials. So if they showed some attitude once in a while, she would understand, which is why Mimi's calm was a little disconcerting for her. This kind of repression usually erupted at either the wrong moment or in other forms of unacceptable behavior. She made a decision to sit and talk to her about her mother. She didn't want her to think it was forbidden to talk about her, and she knew it would do her good to remember the wonderful woman that had brought her into the world. The moment she thought of it, she knew it was something that needed to be done. She would have the other kids talk about their mother as well. Talking about their mother would be therapeutic, and it would let them know it was okay to miss their mother.